This is Craig with Garshalton Advisory. In this video, we're going to work through the Objective 3.5 practice tasks for the Microsoft Office Specialist 2016 Study Guide for Microsoft, Microsoft Excel Expert. Let's get started. So the first thing that we need to do is open up the 3.5 Excel Expert Workbook. I have it highlighted here. We'll double click to open it up. All right, now we're going to be working on tracing the precedence and dependence of the formulas in a cell. So, you know, if you've laid out your workbook properly, this may be a little bit less value for you, especially the precedence one, but we'll follow along with the tasks here. So we're going to check out cell E4, which is this one here. And in order to look at the precedence, so that means the cells that have effectively come before this particular value. And, and now we can take a quick peek here and see that, okay, the value in this cell depends on the value in cell E2, the value of E3, and the value of E3 again. So tracing precedence isn't always that valuable because we can see it. We can also highlight them by either double clicking in that cell or by clicking into our formula bar. But what we're going to do is go from our home tab into our formula tab in our ribbon. Next, we are going to select trace precedence. And when we do that, we see, okay, here are, is a nice visual arrow for us that we can follow the flow of data. So it starts here in row two, moves down to row three, and then finally into our result in row four. Next, we're going to trace the dependence. Now, this can be a little bit more valuable, especially if you have dependents that reside on other worksheets. Now, this example doesn't demonstrate that, but I'll try and describe it as best as I can. So now we're going to go into cell G2, which is the overnight bag list price. And what we're going to do is check out what cells depend on this value. Because if we look in here, we, we don't necessarily see um, where this results in. So that uh, by clicking in this cell, we can't tell what depends on this value. So let's try, check our dependence. And sure enough, this value goes down into the final cell in this row. Now, if there was also a cell on another page that depended on this, you'd see a little arrow and a little box up into the left here. And when you click on that, it would actually list, okay, on this worksheet, this cell depends on this value. Uh, in this case, it, there aren't any other worksheets that depend on this value, so it doesn't give us that demonstration. These can be of some value for you if you're trying to, you know, sometimes I'm like, okay, if I delete this row, I don't think I need it. Maybe I'll check dependence and make sure it's not referenced somewhere else on another worksheet that I don't have to worry about. Now, I will point out that there are some modeling standards. Um, I've done some studying with the FAST modeling standard, in which case they have specific protocols that will effectively prevent you from ever needing to trace dependence or trace precedence just because of how you lay out your models. You don't ever have to worry about there being unknown dependence. Uh, and your precedents are usually right there as well. But that'll be another video series for you. So let's wrap up that task. The next thing we want to do is display the list price worksheet. Okay, so we're going to move to our list price worksheet. And we want to set up a watch for cell F4. All right, so let's select F4 here. Um, the first thing I notice when I click it is there's a little green triangle in the upper left-hand corner. So that's notifying me that there is a, an error in this formula. Not a, not a fatal error, or else I'd have an error message right in the, the formula itself. But just uh, Excel is concerned, let's call it that, about what this is. But we're going to set up a watch. So in order to do that, um, I'm going to select the cell. We're going to click. We're still in our formula tab. We're going to select watch window. Okay. And we're going to delete that watch because that was already in there. We're going to add a new watch. And if I didn't already have this cell selected, all I'd need to do is click it. Um, so I'll do that here. Cell F4. I'm going to click add. And now in my watch window, um, it's always going to show the value for cell F4 on this sheet in this workbook. So in this case, the value is 4596. So that can be a floating window. I can attach that to my sidebar here as well. There we go. 
so that rather than floating above my data, it's just tucked over to the right. Um, and then next thing we need to do is use the error checker to locate and fix the formula error. So typically, or a lot of times what this means is there's a, a formula inconsistency. And so when I click on this warning sign here, uh, it tells me, it says the formula in this cell differs from the formulas in this area of the spreadsheet. So what Excel has done is it's looked at this formula, it's looked at this formula, and it's looked at this formula. And what it's done is it say, these two formulas are the same, this formula is different. Now best practices is that all your formulas, especially all the formulas on the same row, should be identical. So Excel is looking out for this. So we can click this, and again it says inconsistent formula. And um, what we're going to do is we're going to edit in the formula bar. So it highlights the formula. So let's see what the difference is. Let's check on my cell to the left here. So in this case, I have E2 divided by 1 plus E3. In this one, I have G2 divided by 1 plus G3. In this cell, I have F2 divided by 1 minus F3. All right, so there's a there is a difference in this operator here. So in this formula, it's a minus, where the other ones, it's a plus sign. So what we can do, we can actually say, hey, I want to copy the formula for the left. So I don't even have to, to go in and re-edit this. All I have to say is that, you know what, the one on the left is OK. So I'm going to copy that over. And now that is corrected. Now the other thing we can see here is in my watch window, it also shows me that this value is 39.95. Now if I go to a different worksheet, guess what? It still shows me that value. So that can be handy. Sometimes you're working in a complex workbook and you're really curious what the value in a particular cell is. But what you want to do is tweak a precursor to that value that's located on a different sheet. So you can set up the, the result cell into your watch window and then go into your precedent seat, sheet make some changes, and then you don't have to toggle back to your previous worksheet in order to see what the result was, because it shows you right here in the watch window. So that, that may be a, a handy thing for you. Uh, you know, again, good workbook and worksheet design can preclude you needing this, but it is an option for you if you need it. All right, let's go to the last step here, and that is go on back onto our gross margin worksheet. And what we're going to do is we're going to evaluate a formula by stepping into its components. Let's just update this here. All right, so we're going to step into each of the components of this cell, and we will go into G4 here. Okay, so what this does is, you know, again, this is a very simple formula that you can probably figure out in just a, a minute. However, if you have more components, complex formulas that are, are trickier to figure out, you can use the evaluate formula. So again, this is in our formula tab of our ribbon. We're going to select evaluate formula. And in our evaluate formula dialog box, it says, okay, here is the value in cell G4. This formula here is the same one as here. And what we can do is we can, we can step in and out of this formula. So for example, the first thing that's done is it's underlined this uh, value G2. Okay, so we're going to step into that. And it shows that that is based on the list price of G4. I can step into that one more time. And it's now saying that this is based on the value in G2. Uh, which is 85.55. So I can step back out through those different functions. And now you'll notice here is it's left that 79.95 value in place. The next G3 is underlined. So I'm going to select that. And it tells me that that value is 42.95. When I step back out, leaves that 42.95 value in there. Now, both of these are highlighted. So I'm going to evaluate that. And it tells me that the result of that calculation is 37. I can evaluate that again. And all it does is it moves my active part of the formula over here to G3. So I can step into this. 
it tells me that that value is 4295. When I step out, it now just leaves me with the mathematical uh, fraction here. When I click evaluate, it's going to give me the result, which matches what's on my worksheet. So on a more complicated formula, th this may be handy for you to help kind of figure out what each portion of the formula is doing. Um, if you didn't figure it out the first time, you can actually click restart, and it begins with the, the beginning of the formula for you again. This wraps up all of the practice tasks for Objective 3.5. There wasn't a whole lot to Objective 3.5, so we're able to get through things rather quickly here. This was Craig with Carshalton Advisory. Thanks for watching. I look forward to seeing you in, with our next video.